Hey guys, welcome to To See or Not To See, and today we're going to be talking about the, probably the most controversial movie of the year, Batman v Superman. Now I must warn you guys that it's going around about 1.30 in the morning at my house right now, I just got back from the movie theater, um, I gotta get up for work at probably around like, um, 8 in the morning, and I got my green tea in my gumby cup right here to uh, help keep me awake, so, uh, but there's so much interesting stuff to talk about with this movie, let's just get through it, so... Let's get started. <sighs> Alright, let's start out with like the bad stuff with this movie so we can get that out of the way and try to end this you know, review on a positive note for this movie so I don't make it out to sound like it's bad. So the first thing I really want to talk about that I know like everybody just wants to dig into and that is Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Easily the worst part of this movie. This is probably one of the biggest miscastings I've ever seen in any movie. I mean, he is literally... I mean, every scene he's in is awful. Like, he ruined some scenes that could have been really good in this movie. He is probably the worst Lex Luthor I've ever seen. I don't want to say that he's worse than I thought that he was going to be, but honestly, like, he's... He kind of is. He really, he really, he is. He's not a deal breaker for the movie, though, and that's something that I'm really happy about, is that he didn't, like, completely ruin the movie for me to where, like, we couldn't, like, watch it and enjoy it. Because, like, there is some things to, like you know, enjoy in this movie. You can enjoy this movie, and that's something that I was really, like, you know, worried about was whether or not, like, this movie was going to be enjoyable, because, like, Man of Steel was, wasn't was an enjoyable movie, and I was wondering if this one was just going to be the same thing. And fortunately, it's not. Although some of the other problems that return in this movie, though, are the same ones for Man of Steel. And by those problems I'm talking about, yes, like, the story does feel really rushed in some scenes. Like, it, it really jumps around a lot. Like, there's no flashbacks or anything like this in this movie, like, other than Batman's flashbacks of his parents and things like that. Like, what we saw in the trailer. So, like, you know, there's that. But, like, they do, they do skip, like, some scenes that I thought would be, like, important that I wish that they would have dwelled on a little bit more. Also, the shaky cam is back. It's not as bad as before. You know, it's kind of, like, shaking around and everything. You know, like it, it again, it gave me a migraine in the movie theater, just like with Man of Steel when I saw it, unfortunately. But you know, what are you gonna do? Like, it wasn't as bad as Man of Steel, but it was still there. Also, another problem is with this movie is that, yes, Wonder Woman in the movie, you know, she feels very shoehorned in. Like, it doesn't feel like, you know, that she really, like, it doesn't feel like she belongs there or anything. Like, I think it would have made a world of difference if they released a Wonder Woman movie before they released this movie. And that way we would have gotten to know her character a little bit more and that it wouldn't have been just such an awkward thing just kind of having her just kind of shoehorned into the movie. You know, it, it felt like, you know, eh, you know, she shouldn't be here or she should have had, like, a better introduction into this universe and this is this. I thought that Wonder Woman as a character deserved a better big screen debut than what she got in this movie. With that said though, you know, Gail Gadot, she was a great Great performance as Wonder Woman, you know. Well, I don't know about performance, but, you know, great choice, I think. Yeah, I think she did a, you know, really good job as Wonder Woman. She looks the part. I'm glad that they got, you know, a Mediterranean actress to play her. You know, I think that was just perfect casting right there. Another problem that I had with this movie is that it feels like Batman and Superman, like the whole idea of them being together you know, in the same movie kind of gets muddled with a lot of other things that are happening because this movie, they have to introduce this Batman into this world because he didn't get a movie before this, so they're introducing this Batman, and to me, like, that coupled with a lot of the other subplots that are going on, like with Wonder Woman and everything, take away from the time that Superman and Batman should be on screen together, and that was disappointing. We don't really get a lot of that in this movie. But, you know, bitch and moan, bitch and moan, let's get on to the things that I did surprisingly really like about the movie. The big thing I want to talk about with the good things is Ben Affleck as Batman. He was really good. I really liked him. You know, I he did just as well as I thought he was going to do. I've always, from the beginning, I thought Ben Affleck was a good choice and that he was going to do well. I was really happy that he did a great job with this movie. Still, I don't think the best, like, on-screen cinematic Batman. I think that still goes to Michael Keaton, but I would say that he was better than Christian Bale, and I'm really happy that I get to say that about him. Jeremy Irons is great as Alfred. I loved it. It's a perfect pairing. Him and Alfred have great chemistry. It's just, you know, really great choice with that. Henry Cavill is back as Superman, and I still like Henry Cavill. I think that's a good choice. He does come off as, like, being kind of monotone and boring at some times, and, like, has some really awkward reactions to some things, and comes off as kind of bland. But there's other scenes where he does do a really good job. But overall, I think that his performance in Man of Steel was... 
in some ways a little bit better, but in some ways here it was better than he, his performance in Man of Steel. Amy Adams is back as Lois Lane, and I really think that she, you know, they improved her part in this movie because, for one, it feels like there is a point to her being around with all of this, you know? There's a point to her existing in this movie, which is really good. All the other actors in the movie, except for Jesse Eisenberg, did a good job. And, you know, overall, like, I really did enjoy this movie a lot more than I thought I would. I went into this thing, like, you know, I really want to like it. I hope that it changes my mind about the whole DC Universe thing. I wouldn't, I was going into this movie thinking, I'm, this movie, I'm either going to love it or I'm going to hate it. And I didn't expect to find myself in the middle here like I am. Like, you know, not loving it, but not, definitely not hating it either. What it all comes down to is that this movie could have been a hell of a lot worse than what we got. And overall, the, the biggest problem is that all the problems that you thought were going to be, you know, happen in this movie going into it, like from judging from the trailers with the casting choices and everything, with the exception of Ben Affleck, anybody who thought that Ben Affleck wasn't going to be a good Batman, you know, that's, you know, he was a great Batman, but all the other problems that you thought going into this movie that were going to affect it, like Jesse Eisenberg is Lex Luthor, there being too many characters in this movie, it being crowded and things like that, it really does affect this movie, and everything that you thought was going to be wrong with it is wrong with this movie, unfortunately. I really didn't want to say that, but yeah, it is. is that's what it comes down to. I think that they did redeem themselves from a lot of the problems that they have with Man of Steel, though, in this movie. I really think they did a good job at that. It seems like they kind of justify it and everything, but the big problem in this movie, I think, is that... I don't think it was really, like, Zack Snyder's fault or any of the writing's fault, except for maybe David S. Goyer, you know, trying to make everything Batman, you know? You could tell, like, this was Batman's movie with Superman in it. But I think that the biggest problem was probably up at the corporate level where they're saying, like, oh, like, we got a movie coming out, like, Captain America Civil War that's kind of a similar superhero movie, so let's throw in more superheroes into this movie and, you know, try to compete with them, unfortunately. And I think that that really muddled what could have been a really great superhero movie if they just kept it more focused on Batman and Superman. Also, some of the things that they revealed in the trailers feel like they would have been great reveals in the movie if we never knew that they were going to be there. So, really, like, that's my overall thoughts about the movie. And I did enjoy this movie enough, though, to, well, I will give it a 2C because it corrects some of the problems with Man of Steel. Overall, I really wish I could have given it higher than that, but unfortunately, you know, I just couldn't. I have to be honest with movies, and I have to try to, like, put my biases aside, you know, because these are some of my favorite characters in this movie. I have to give this movie what it honestly is. It feels like it's just making up for the mistakes in Man of Steel and trying to play catch-up to Marvel. And it succeeded in some things, and it is an entertaining movie. I really want to know more than ever what the fans think of this movie, so make sure you comment below and tell me what you thought of Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. So that's it for me. As always, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below. And remember, I waste my money so you don't have to. Thanks for watching.